If you post a question about WordPress, like should I start on WordPress? This is a hot button topic in any of the Facebook groups. We are gonna talk about it today and why I have very strong feelings about WordPress. You ready? Buckle up, this is gonna get controversial. What's up, magical human? Hey, if you're like me and you want to create a bigger impact on the world, why not share your knowledge and talents with others? Welcome to the podcast where I share marketing strategies, product creation tips, and real life stories of how women all over the world are using their knowledge and creativity to build a life and business they love on their terms. I'll share with you over a decade of knowledge and show you how you can take what you already know and do and package it into a digital product like a course membership site or digital download that sells globally. I'm Amy Jo and you're listening to the Digital Magic Podcast. Now, when I say this is going to get controversial, I really mean this because anytime you go into a Facebook group, you're hammered with either start on WordPress or I hate WordPress. There's really no in between of like eh, the gray area. There really isn't at least from what I have seen. And you're either gonna talk to people who are like, if you don't start on WordPress, that's ridiculous. What are you doing? You're ruining everything. And then you're gonna get the other people who are like, I'm never touching that software again. And that is where I am and I will tell you why. Now, before I get into my full story of why I am traumatized (laughs) from WordPress, make sure you have downloaded your free digital product toolkit. It's at herownmagic.com slash toolkit. It has trainings in there, it has digital product ideas, resources, everything is in there so that you can get up and running selling your own digital products, which I'm very passionate about. But today we are continuing on with the series of platforms. And so if you've been following along, we've talked about Wix, Kajabi, Shopify. We've talked a lot about the major platforms out there when you're looking to start your own business or start selling services, digital products, whatever it is you want to sell online. We're digging into each of these platforms so that you can know which one is the best fit for you. And today we are talking about WordPress. Now, back in the day, back when I was a blogger and like that was my coming to the online space was blogging. I started off on like blogger and blogspot, all that fun stuff. Zynga, if you will, from way back when. And I started researching and everybody was talking about WordPress and getting on wordpress.org. And it's so amazing. Like you own the, you know, you own your space on the internet, la la la. And so I was like, well, I mean, if they say I should do it, then I should do it. And I can't tell you now, like looking back these days in my little boutique agency, the amount of people that come to me and they're like, get me off WordPress. I'm so stressed. I don't even know what's happening. I can't manage it myself. I'm so overwhelmed with a dashboard in the back end. Like I get that a lot. And so let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Cause there are other options like through this series. And so I want to just share my experience, share what happened to me and why I left that platform and never looked back because it was very scary. (laughs) So like I said, I started out in the blogging space. And when you are in the blogging space, of course, the next option outside of like just writing your blogs is you want to monetize, you want to build affiliate partnerships, you want guest blogging and like all of this stuff so that you can actually make money doing your thing, right? So that was my initial next step. How can we do this thing? So moving from a platform like blogger or blogspot, where I was just blogging on this space. I wanted to own my own section of the internet. And so everyone was like, you need to go to wordpress.org, buy your own little, you know, section of the internet. You own it. You're self-hosted, magical, woohoo. So that is what I did. And let me tell you, I did feel fancy. I felt like I had upgraded. I felt super excited about it. And as I kind of moved forward, I was like, okay. And for me, you know, I do have a techie background. And so I was learning about you know, how to design the thing, templates, make it the way that I want, make my website the way that I wanted. And then I started to discover plugins. And so plugins, the easiest way to describe it is if you think of a smartphone and you want to download applications onto your phone so that it has more functionality, that is what a plugin is. So basically on WordPress, you can download these plugins onto your site so that they can do more things. So you, you know, a lot of bloggers out there who are still on WordPress, they will have these plugins that help their blog, you know, grow, helps their traffic, helps their SEO, all these different, you know, uh, plugins that you can add to your site. 
And so I was downloading these plugins and thinking that I was the coolest kid on the block and super excited about it. When one day, I think I, it was probably a year into it or so. One day I go and I'm about ready to do my blog and I try to log in and there's nothing. Everything is white. I can't even, I don't even have a login screen. It's saying I don't exist online. I can't log in. I can't see anything. The whole page is literally white. Like there's no options to do anything. So of course I'm like, uh, help. What just happened? Did I delete my site? Like what is happening right now? And so I'm freaking out obviously. And so the only thing I can think about this time was to talk to GoDaddy, which is who I buy my dom domains through. So I contact them and I'm like, what is happening? Like yeah, everything just disappeared. I can't even log in. I'm freaking out. Everything that I built, all the blogs, like where did they go? And so the guy, I'm on tech support with this guy. It's midnight or 1 a.m., which, yay, thanks GoDaddy, you know, for doing this in the middle of the night. But they're walking me through. And so they're like, well, we're really going to have to dig into this. You're going to have to pay like additional money because what we think is going on is that one of the plugins... I didn't know that I was supposed to regularly update these things. I thought they updated automatically, which I guess some of them have the option and some you have to do manually at the time. I don't even know. And so I hadn't been keeping up with these updates. And so the way that the guy that described it to me was you were late on doing one of these updates for one of these plugins and a termite, quote unquote, like a code termite, got in and started eating away code of my website. And so of course I'm like, um, can we like reverse that? Or like, what do we do about this? So if you think of like a house that you have spent years building and you're, you know, decorating it, you're doing all this stuff and then you start getting termites and you don't even know. And the termites have done all of this damage and you come back to your house one day and your house is gone. That's basically what happened. And so I had to pay money for this guy to go in and fix all of the code that this little code termite had destroyed. And it all came back to a plugin that I just didn't update on time. And what scared me about this is if it's in the middle of the night, like this was, and an upgrade or an update to one of these plugins becomes available and I don't do it in time, is this going to happen again? Am I going to have to pay more money? It just freaked me out. And so I was like, I don't even know if I want to like risk this anymore and keep building on this thing when that could happen. And I guess looking back now, that could really happen to anything you know, as far as code termites and things like that. And luckily the guy was able to fix it. He got everything back in working order, you know, pr fairly quickly, which was very nice. Um, but it still freaked me out. Like to this day, I'm like, eh, I'm scared of that ever happening again. And so I looked for other platforms, but that was kind of one, like one of the biggest thing. One was the user experience, which I think newer people coming into the online space, WordPress is just really hard to navigate sometimes for people who don't have the techie side. Um, and there are easier and better options to get up and running quicker. And, you know, it's easier to manage the back end, that sort of thing. Now, I know you may be thinking, like, if you have followed this series, I did talk about Wix and how I really like Wix. And Wix does have plugins. I've never had to worry about, you know, upgrading or updating a plugin. It handles it automatically. And so I've never had an issue, knock on wood, so far. Um, but if you don't want to worry about anything like that with like plugins and having to update stuff or anything, you know, of that nature, then you're going to be looking at simpler systems like system.io, um, Kajabi, even Shopify. And so I know this is going to ruffle feathers because there's a lot of people who are like very headstrong about WordPress and I, it is a very powerful, especially blogging platform. It is a very powerful platform, but for someone like me back in the day who was just coming into it, I didn't know about these plugins and the updating and like what could go wrong if I didn't. And so I know I'm not the only one. And so people coming into the online space, I like to give them this story, give them a little heads up and be like, maybe it's not the platform to start with. You know, it's a another, in my opinion, another layer of stress when you have to worry about stuff like that. So I wanted to share that story with you just so that you know going out and finding your own software, all of that fun stuff, that that is something to keep in mind. Now, I did mention that a lot of people have come to me like on my agency side and being like, you know, I'm on WordPress right now. Can you get me off of this? I don't know how to manage it. I don't know how to design my own pages. I don't even know. I don't know how to build a funnel on this thing. I'm so stressed. And they have had plugin issues like I have had as well. So I just, 
like I'm saying, I'm just sharing y'all experiences that I have had and with my clients as well. And so moving them to a different, more manageable dashboard and a more manageable software has been very beneficial to everybody. Now, you may be thinking, before I sign off on this podcast, you may be thinking that, well, uh, WordPress is like the OG of SEO. Like all, everything I'm reading is that WordPress is amazing for SEO. And yeah, you can't argue with that at all. But I will argue that a lot of the softwares out there, the up and coming ones, the newer ones, like Kajabi, um, system.io still has some stuff to work on when it comes to like SEO, but Kajabi is up updating their systems to be more SEO friendly. Wix is like out. Um, I would put it right up there with WordPress as far as SEO functionality. But again, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to you and what is the most manageable for you. So if you want to go out and do free trials of these different softwares, do it and check out the back end, check out the dashboard, see if it's going to be manageable for you. If it adds any additional stress to the entrepreneurship that you're already in, say, see ya. You do not need additional stress, especially when it comes to tech stress. That's a whole nother level. Like when you're trying to sell something and it's not selling because some link is broken or something in the tech is broken, all of that fun stuff, right? So don't even mess with that. Get a system that is easy for you to manage and does not keep you up at night worrying if you updated a plugin or not, okay? So I wanted to share that story with you. Let me know in the Facebook group what you think or what software you are thinking about using and I will see you on the next episode. See ya. Aw oh man, this episode's over, but that's okay. You can come hang out in the Digital Product Female Entrepreneurs Facebook group, hang out with thousands of us making digital products, creating awesome, cool things, and selling them to the world. Come get inspired, come hang out with us. There's thousands of us there, and we cannot wait to support you. Now, if you need some ideas on digital products that you can create and sell, go to herownmagic.com and download my freebie. It's 65 digital products you can create and sell by this weekend. It is waiting for you there. Go check it out. And you have an amazing week. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you next time. Go create your own magic.